What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is my second channel, and this is your home for my Twitch highlights and my podcast. So if you like this, and you wanna see more of that, and you wanna join the live streams, there's a link to that in the description of this video. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. This is from Ben from Neck Deep Story. Like I was saying, Neck Deep is probably the most popular pop punk band from the UK, among the most popular uh, pop punk bands globally. They've got one and a half million Spotify listeners, Probably of that whole cohort of bands that started in the, you know, early 2010s, uh, I would say that they're probably the most popular one now. They always seem like pretty cool, chill guys. I don't know them personally, but, you know, ran across them once or twice. They seemed cool and always heard good things. So I was a little bit disappointed to see this. Uh, ben from Neck Deep's story here. The first one is, is it pop punk or is it just pop? Then he says, is it really punk or is it $2,000 an outfit to look to just look like one? And you're like, oh, I wonder who he's talking about. Is it just celebrities grabbing at something they don't understand? Why is everyone on Warped wearing Nike Air Max for Insta relevance? And so then we know he's talking about MGK. Uh, what he's referring to is the, uh, you know, I don't even want to call it a rant, but when MGK was on Allison from Spotify's show uh, and he jokingly referred to bands on Warped Tour wearing comfortable shoes on stage instead of something that looked cooler like uh, Doc Martens. He wasn't literally saying like bands should wear uncomfortable shoes shoes as though wearing uncomfortable shoes is somehow important to being a good band. What he was saying is, you know, pop punk and rock in general has a lack of stars because they prioritize things like being comfortable over putting on a good show. He didn't literally mean that the type of shoes you wear on stage is important, but of course everyone got butt hurt and took that out of context and, you know, focused on that statement. Um, but now we know he's talking about MGK. Next. He says, it's all of those things, but it ain't pop punk. Go jam some Green Day people, XXX. And for what it's worth, I'm all for pop punk getting some recognition, and I'm not gatekeeping it from anyone. It should be for everyone. But when you don't give back to the genre, don't put on smaller bands, and you just use it to appeal to the clueless celebrity circles and top 40 normies with no respect for it, the world it comes from, it belittles the work and experience of the bands who have kept the genre alive. As you can probably guess, I'm not a huge fan of this. It's a little bit disappointing from somebody that, you know, seemed like he was pretty chill. Uh, and despite the fact that he says he's not gatekeeping, that is in fact exactly what he's doing, which is unfortunate. I don't know how old he is, um, maybe 30 ish or something like that, but a couple thoughts here. So first of all, he holds up Green Day as the example of like real pop punk and says everyone should go listen to that. He's too young to remember this, but literally everything that he said about MGK is exactly what people said about Green Day in 1994 or 95 when you know they were that band putting you know pop punk on a mainstream stage all the same shit you know that they weren't real pop punk uh that you should go listen to screeching weasel or something instead you know they dress wrong blah 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 all the same shit it's funny and it's just kind of an example of what i've talked about with this like 10 year rule is what i say um whether it's 10 years or not you know it depends but every band that was once hated eventually becomes like cool and accepted by gatekeepers green day is a perfect example of that so i thought that was kind of funny so he's talking about mgk here uh and uh, there's there's this idea of like the dress code and i guess how much you're allowed to spend on clothes which i think is funny so he says here is it really punk or is it two thousand dollars an outfit to look like one how much is mgk allowed to spend on clothes and remain punk and like what is he allowed to wear in, in your eyes to retain credibility right like the dude's rich should he not spend his money on stuff i mean i i, I don't I think the way he dresses is kind of goofy, but you know, he's a rock star and I'm not. I guess I just don't understand why anybody would care so much uh, how much a stranger spends on clothes. I don't agree with the idea that um, spending, uh, you know, X amount of dollars uh, on clothes forfeits your credibility or like what if he spent 1999 on an outfit is, is that punk if not where's the uh where's the threshold ben says he's not gatekeeping but to me this is like the essence of gatekeeping telling somebody what they're allowed to wear and how much they're allowed to spend on it is like the most gatekeeping thing imaginable this is like it goes back to the idea of the punk uniform so that's a little bit 
disappointing. I'm sure people said the same thing about them, you know, that when they were coming out, they said, oh, you, you dress too much like the story so far, you're too American, blah, blah, blah. Just this, this fixation on appearance and dress code to me is like about the least punk thing in the world. Like there should not be a punk dress code. He says, uh, basically, you know, that MGK is just catering to celebrities and normies and he's not doing anything for the genre and he should be using his platform to help put on other bands. Well, there's a lot of things that I have, a lot of questions that I have about this or, or thoughts or things that I would like to poke at here. Number one, I would say, well, Ben, you're, you're not using your platform to put on younger bands right now. You're complaining about, complaining about MGK. So how are you any different? Second, I think there's a larger question of like, do artists have a responsibility to use the platform that they spent years building to put on other people? I don't think they do. I mean, it's nice if they do, like, I think it's cool when they do as Travis Barker has been doing recently, but does he have an obligation to do that? I, I don't think so. The implied idea here that he's not doing anything for the genre because he's catering to normies and celebrities, I think is also false. The fact that he is getting normies and celebrities, uh, you know, to care about pop punk to me is doing a ton for the genre because who else has been able to do that? Nobody. He's number one on Billboard. He's in celebrity gossip headlines. You know, Kourtney Kardashian is posting about this stuff like i would argue that that's doing a ton for the genre don't we all remember when green day and blink and these other bands uh were you know at uh, at their peak and they were you know in the same place that mgk is wasn't that like the glory days of the genre i think it was as far as popularity goes anybody can go uh you know tweet about a random local band uh, but only mgk has the ability to make this stuff relevant in a global mainstream context and i don't care what anybody says there absolutely is a trickle down effect there if we see one person having success doing a thing other people emulate that when somebody starts a company like uber everybody else comes along and they're like oh my company is like uber for blank it's uber for bananas and it's going to be the same thing with MGK. It already is. You know, people see someone like MGK have all the success with pop punk. What are they going to do? They're going to emulate him. I don't agree with the idea that MGK A has an obligation to use his platform to put other people on. I also don't agree with the idea that uh, he's doing nothing for the genre. I would argue he is doing something tremendously valuable for the genre that only a handful of people like him and Travis Barker are, are pretty much the only people right now capable of doing that, maybe to a lesser extent, you know, Jaden and Lil Huddy and these TikTok people, but they're nowhere near, they're, they're big on TikTok, but they're nowhere as big uh, as MGK and Travis are, you know, in the mainstream sense. So uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Ben seems like a cool guy. I think Neck Deep is a solid band, but it's, I, I, I think he's dead wrong in this one. This is not it, man. Just don't be like this. Don't be that guy. Uh, I think it would be way cooler, you know, if, if he's not into MGK, which is fine. I, I don't, I mean, I think MGK stuff is, is good, but I don't love it. Just ignore it if you don't like it. Or, you know, the better move I think would be to, you know, be stoked that MGK is doing whatever he's doing. To criticize him for the way he dresses is just like, I'll tell you what's not punk is that. Like the kind of people that, you know, talk shit on me for wearing hats all the time because wearing hats isn't punk. Like, or because I'm wearing the wrong brand of shirt. Like, I didn't realize that there was a dress code and that we had to wear the right fucking brand in order to be part of your club, but uh, now we know. Sad to see that from Ben. I think it's also a sign that you're doing something right. You know, you go on the, the Pop Punkers subreddit and uh, everyone's mad at MGK and Jaden and all these other people, and that's a sign you're doing something right. So there you go. What do you guys think about this? My thought would be if you were in Ben's shoes and people were asking you about MGK, how would you reply? That's That would be my question.